Hi and welcome back to the Polymer Clay channel. I'm going to be doing something different today but firstly I'd like to mention these wonderful flowers that are in my background. I had a chat with a lady from Paper Petal Craft, her name is Pooja Norris and I asked her to make me some flowers. Now this is not a paid promotion, she hasn't asked me to promote her business but I personally think that these are absolutely wonderful and as you can see from the close-ups here they're such a beautiful flower, handmade and I had a discussion with her about talking about them on my channel. I'm very much the sort of person that will promote small businesses, particularly handmade craft businesses, and I'll be featuring artists on the back of my screen. Um, I think this is a great way to connect with people and also for me to get some fantastic crafts for the back of my screen. So thanks very much to Pooja Norris over on Paper Petal Craft for making these. So moving on to my tutorial. Okay, so what I'm going to show you how to do today is how to cover a book. Um, so this is a blank sketchbook. It's got like a, um, a matte kind of effect to the front cover. And one I've made before looks similar to this. Now I didn't actually get around to popping that on the, um, on the book. So together it would look something like that. So you can turn a plain book into something really quite fantastic to be honest. Um, but today what I'm going to show you how to do is same sort of technique but it's going to have a lock and a key on it. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, so I'll just go through the tools that I've got out here today. Um, this is Fimo Black and it's just been rolled so it's ready to go. Then I have two effects, one is Silver 81 and it's called Metallic Silver and this is Fimo Effect uh, Metallic Gold. I've got three rollers here, I'm not sure which one I'm going to use so I'm just going to show you which ones are in the running. Okay, so this one's a, a swirly pattern. This one has a more crosshatch effect, it's quite nice. And this one has a weaved effect look. Now this is quite a deep pattern, so I might go for this one. I think that'll look really nice um, on the background. And I've got some mica powders. This one is Truffle, and this one is Chateau. And these are from the Colour Shack. And I've got some unbranded mica powders here as well. These two are like a goldy colour, one's darker than the other. And this one's like a metallic effect, so it's quite nice. When it's painted onto black Fimo, it does actually look very metallic, so it does actually look more metal, so it's really nice. Then I've got my cutters, so there's two different sizes here. And then I've got my glitters, and this one is Millionaire by the Colour Shack. Very pretty, this one. And then I've got a goldy sort of bronze colour and then my favourite, the holographic. And lastly, the tools I'll be using today, plastic one, as always, my two dotting tools, one small, one medium, a paintbrush for the mica powders, and then the sharpen tools are going to be used will be the craft knife, tissue blade, I've got two sorts here just in case I need a stronger one as well and then this one's quite a handy tool, it's got like a little scoop in it and that's handy for glitter. Um, I recently lost it so <laughs> it's reappeared so I'm going to use that today as well. So the design I'm going to do today is going to be a lock and key effect. And the idea is, is it's going to feature on this book here and it'll have the lock in the middle, which is why I want the shape of the heart. So I want to make the lock in a sort of a heart shape. And then next to that, I'm going to have to place a little key and then we'll have some other designs to go around the outside. So I'm looking for the book to sort of be this way round. So it would open up that way. So it will have either this one here or possibly this one depending on how they actually come out. And I'm going to make the design so that it's 3D, so it's not going to be a completely flat design. And then I'm going to decorate around the outside. The colourings I'm using today, as I've shown you, are the gold and the silver, 
and the black but this could all change based on what mica powders that I use and whereabouts I put them so okay I'm gonna get started now right so as you can see I've rolled um, the flat black out and it's now um, on a separate tile because I tend to make all of it on here and then pop the whole tile with all the decorations on uh, into the oven uh, when it's finished and that means that you don't have to then pick it up or, or anything like that plus the fact that it is actually completely well stuck um, so there's no way that this is going to come off at all okay so what I'm going to do now is have a look at which design is going to be more suitable for the lock and I think that one's going to be quite nice I don't like the fact that it hasn't got a nice dip here so I'll probably pop that in so I'll make that look a bit deeper so I'm going to roll out some more clay and and then I'm going to use this design to make the lock Okay, so I've done the heart. I'm just going to leave that there for a little while because the, the clay is really, really soft. So every press at the moment, I'm making more of a dent than I really need to. So I'm going to leave that and set that aside for now. I've just made some little strips. So this is going to be the key part. This is going to be the long part. Um, and I've just made some other ones just so, sort of, so they're prepared for when I need them. So I'm just going to go back to the actual main um, part of it now the background so I've got several texture stamps that I'd like to try out today but before putting them on the actual um, background um, there's a good way of testing um, whether you like them or not so just roll it onto a piece of scrap clay and place it over the design to see if you think that will be the sort of pattern or effect that you're looking for so this is like a basket effect it's almost like a weave look to it so i'm just going to turn this piece over and then i'm going to re-roll and then i'm going to try some more out and see what i like for the background Okay, so what I've decided is I'm going to go for this swirly design. It's quite detailed, so it's going to cover it really well, I think. So I'm just going to do that now in the background, um, and then we'll move on to the other decorations. Just placing some baby oil over the actual background, and this helps the clay to be a bit more sticky, and um, it will take to the roller a little bit better. So I'm just doing that now, and then I'll pop the roller on and see what sort of pattern I get. Now with this sort of rolling, you press and keep even pressure and then keep rolling.
and there we have it very nice evenly placed stamp there are some parts of this that haven't gone on quite so well but I think the majority has and where it hasn't I can add other decorations to um, cover that up really so I think considering that was the first attempt it's not bad I've got them all I've got all of these on separate tiles and the reason for that is because they go into the oven on the tile that they're on um, and it makes it easier uh, for making something and also the transferring obviously with this and the key that I'm going to make on the other tile I won't have to move them off once I've made them and it just makes it so much easier So I want a very long and thin piece now and this is going to be for the lock so I'm just going to roll this out and get it as skinny as I can without it breaking and we'll see how we get on. I'm going to do the outline of the lock but first I'm going to pop a hole in it around about here nice and deep bit of a turn and that way you've got the basis of the lock to start with then something more blunt nice plastic tool that I always use Pop it here again nice and blunt so now you have a, um, a shape to go around and I'm just going to make a line at the end to give it that lock shape okay bit of a close-up that's what it looks like so far so that was quite simple to do so that's the sort of design um, for a lock uh, hole and I'm just going to decorate around that now. Okay, so that's given it a more 3D look. All I've done, as you've seen, is just literally draw around it with some clay um, in the sort of same sort of shape um, and then gently sort of manipulated it round so that it fit quite nicely. So what I'm going to do now is make some further designs around the handle of the lock. So what I'm going to do now is work around the little lock design and create some little patterns and, and sort of make it a, a really nice design. So as you can see it's given it a bit more definition at the top so I'm just going to work my way around here and create the same sort of design around the outside. Okay I've just smoothed the design out a bit so it's got less fingerprints on that part now. I should have thought of this before but I haven't got any pattern on here so I'm just going to try and make some pattern designs and then go ahead with some other long bits of clay and just work that design round. Okay so it's made a little pattern there so now I'm going to make some further 3D effects um, with the long um, pieces of clay like I did around the outside and um, to create more of a depth. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay so that's what we've got now so we've got the raised lock design here and then where I put the pattern there was a line obviously because I didn't use the whole thing so I've just popped some of those little swells so now you can't see the line and I'm going to continue up here to do the same thing and then I'm going to make a design that goes along this side to also cover up um, the, the part where it where the pattern ends as well so I'm now going to do that part That's the top part now and that covers up nicely that sort of area as well so I'm now going to do it down this side here Okay, so I thought I'd show you a little bit of a close-up view of the lock so far. I am struggling to get my lighting right so you could see the design nice and close. So hopefully that fixes that. So I've made some little swirls and the pattern you can still see quite clearly, which is really nice. I have made a design so that it's um, mirrored and I think that gives the lock a really nice look. I'm going to work on the handle part of the lock now. Um, I don't even know if that's the right word for it. But this part here, I'm going to start on the design. I'm going to make that a little bit more uh, detailed and, and then I'm going to start work on the key. When I do the key, I'm going to do all the basics and then I'll film like this so you can see the styles of what I come up with. I'm going to go for a similar design of the lock so that they match um, and I think that will give the um, the book uh, quite, a nice, quite a nice look to it as well. Okay so that's for the next bit so I'm going to start on this bit here. Okay, so I've just made the little lines to go on the top here around this part and how I did that was just cut the strips off and then with this tool um, I just gently tucked them under. Um, this tool works quite well because you can get it under things and that way it looks like it's gone all the way around. So I don't flatten the little um, 
lines that I did I literally put them on as if they go all the way around and then I just did um, some little swirls here um, just to complement the rest of the design so this is now all almost ready for mica powder so what I'm going to do is work on the key now so I can do all the mica powders all at once and that's what I'm going to do next so I've made the basic key shape and what I'm going to do now is just get my tissue blade and bring that up so I can then pop it on this tile. The idea is, is that it stays put <laughs> then when you're cooking it uh, in the oven um, you don't have to sort of move it around too much. So this is where I start building the key design. I'm just going to show you a close up of what I've made so far. Okay, so this is the key shape that I'm going with. You can do any really. Um, I liked this one, I just sort of went with it and cut it out. So now I'm going to build the key on this little tile. And the idea of that is it, as I said before, it can stay put and then it can um, harden in the oven without you having to move it. If the pieces do come apart when you've cooked it, um, you could just then simply glue after. So I'm going to continue now popping the key together and making the top part as well. Okay, so that's now a bit more together. Um, as, I've, as you've seen, I've just manipulated it a bit so it's in shape. And I'll probably keep doing that as I work on it as well. So I've just manipulated it so it stays in shape. Um, and I'll do a bit more work on that as I go because I'm sure I'll knock that from time to time. So I'm just going to make sure that this shape stays the same as I go. And I'm going to do the decorations on the end here. Work the way up the, the key and then do the round part at the top. Okay, so I've just created a little bottom part here, so that gives the, the key a bit more length. Um, and I'm looking for more of a vintage design, so I'm going to make some quite ornate um, decorations up here, um, and I'll make it sort of quite interesting as well. So now I'm going to start on the top part here, um, and as I said, I'm building the design as I go on this tile, and then it will all stay together in the oven. Okay, so I've got a larger piece of clay here and I'm just going to show you how I did the heart design. So firstly, cut at an angle and this will give you the basis of the heart shape. Bring it round so you have it like that. Straighten it up a little bit. Really. And bring to a point and cut again. Flip it over press together here and bring round and then cut straight down bring together and then manipulate how you would like the heart to be I like my heart's quite quite full and outwards. And then bring the tool round so you have that nice rounded shape. And there we have it, a nice heart. OK, 
Okay, so I've made some um, decorations here on the bottom and then I've made some little strips here and three on the top and I've made the heart shape a little bit wider so that I can add some decoration to that and also that will give it some strength as well so when it comes out of the oven it won't be quite as flimsy so it'll be quite um, it'll be quite strong so I'm going to add some little prints probably around about here and now I'm going to work on the top part Okay, so this is what I've done so far. Made the strips here and the strips at the top and the detail on the heart. Now I've made lots of little dots here. You may not be able to see them. I'm sorry about the lighting. Um, a little swell here and then some further um, little strips. These are rounded where these ones are flat. I think the flat ones work better on the, on the part of the key on the long bit. And then I've made some rounded ones here and a little swell and some more dots and I've pointed this one slightly right here to make the um, heart shape still a bit more present. What I'm going to do now is do some pressing of some prints to match the lock um, and then we're headed for the mica powders. So I used random parts of the um, stamp there on all of the plain parts of the the key a little bit up here and on the uh, long bit of the key here and then um, on the lock part so now I'm going to do both the key and the lock together in mica powders and get some shimmering effects going on okay so this is where you'll see it coming to life I'm just going to press on this color and it's going to give a really pretty uh, metallic effect, which is what I'm looking for. So at the moment, I'm just highlighting around the outside nice and gently to get that look around there. Okay, I just added a couple of extra little swirls here just to give it a bit more of a design. I don't want to paint the whole thing in this colour because I think having a mixture makes it really interesting. So I'm just going to do the same now in this sort of colouring with the key. Okay, so there's the lock. Now I haven't completely finished with the mica powders yet, um, but I think it needs a little bit more detail here. And I know it's on the key, the heart shaped part. I wanted to put a bit more detail in there. So I'm just going to give the key part um, right at the top, the little heart piece, a little bit more detail just here, um, just to sort of finish off that design.
Okay, so I've created a bit more uh, detail in the top part here. Um, just to go around and inside the uh, heart piece there. And then I've just created some little dots along here and along the bottom there. And I'm just going to pop some mica powder on the top part now. Okay, so I've just added a few more dots on this one here and then copied the mica powders um, that I used on the key as well. Just going to add a very little glitter, not too much on this because I think it's got quite a lot of design on it already and I don't want it to take away from the effects that I've already popped on. So, Okay, I've got them ready now. So because I've popped the uh, mica powders on first, I'm going to use some liquid FIMO. Um, this helps the glitter stick. So I'm just going to pop that in varying places around the key and the lock um, and then pop the glitter on. Okay, here we go. So there's the the lock with all its glitter and mica powders. I like to do a sort of a shading effect so it's not all one colour and that um, gives that that special look. And I also leave some parts so that you can see the black through it as well, which I think gives it a really nice effect. And then the key in a similar way. Uh, little bits of glitter in certain places but not all over okay so these two are now ready for the oven right so these are fresh out the oven now and that's what they're looking like got a really nice design to them and that's the lock and there's the key just to get a bit of I'm struggling with lighting today there we go bit of light there so that's what they look so I'm going to take these off the tiles and then we're going to pop it on the background now so I think I've decided on where I want the lock and key and I think it's quite nice right in the middle so what I'm going to do now is just make some decorations along the outside, highlight the print that's on the back there, and this will be almost ready to go in the oven. Okay, so I've just made some rough colourings and I've left gaps in this because I like the design sort of showing through a little bit and what I'm going to do now is just add some other colours um, just to highlight and where the print pattern hasn't taken so well I'm going to be adding some of my own decorations.
Okay, so I've made some decorations around the outside and I've put a little print on them as well and now I'm going to paint them. I'm also going to highlight this a bit more because I think the background is very close to the lock and key so I want to make sure that the lock and key stands out a bit more so I'm just going to give it a different colour. Okay, so this is the final design. I think that's turned out really well. It's got quite a metallic look to it, so I'm just gonna pop this in the oven now and we'll see how it comes out. Okay, here we go. Here is the lock and key design on a notebook. So I've made the little swirls around the outside and the lock and key match the background. So that is how you make a lock and key on a notebook. Thanks for watching, see you again soon.